Ladies and gentlemen, let us now introduce the Wayne Hills starting offensive lineup. At wide receiver number 18, Hunter Hayek, number 18. At wide receiver number 19, Tyler Hayek, number 19. At tackle, number 59, John Stadler, number 59. At guard, number 63, Mike Zacone, number 63. At center, number 58, Scott Fishgrun, number 58. At guard, number 57, Jason Modak, number 57. At tackle, number 72, Bensi Polgar, number 72. At tight end, number 44, Tyler Tretacosta, number 44. At wide receiver, number 83, Evidence Nojoku, number 83. At quarterback, number seven, Brendan Devara, number seven. At fullback, number six, Anthony Cuzo, number six. And at tailback, number 22, Luca Grave, number 22. And let's welcome the rest of the Patriot squad. Hello and welcome to Patriot Stadium. I am Brandon Brogan. I will be doing your play-by-play -play today on this fine Saturday afternoon. I am joined by John Vitas and Jared Pohl. So today is a big day for Wayne Hills, 50th anniversary. Football has obviously been a huge part of the Wayne Hills culture for the last 50 years. So we expect a big game between Wayne Hills and Milburn. Milburn being the obvious underdog today. John, what do you think will be the outcome of this game so far today? And what do you think are some advantages that Wayne Hills has over Milburn? 
Well, just looking at it from, from the outside, looking in, right off the bat, Wayne Hills looks very energized for this matchup, a Saturday afternoon game at home. They've had a lot of close games. They've played some pretty steady competition all year long, but this is a team that they know they can handle. Milburn hasn't won yet this season. They've been outscored by a combined point total of 111 to 24. So Milburn has their work cut out for them today against the Patriots team that is Undefeated in the state of New Jersey, their lone loss this year came down in Florida. So it's the kind of game that Wayne Hills knows they can have if they play well. So we expect this one to be a little bit one-sided, but we'll see how it plays out. And John, you've been a part of the Wayne Hills culture for a very long time. Tell me, during your years at Wayne Hills, how big was football in the program so far? Well, football's always really been the identity of this school, especially when you think about the different sports. They're very solid athletic department a lot of the programs are very successful but football has always been the staple here at wayne hills i attended the school from 2007 to 2011 three state titles in that time and they won a slew of them even before that as well going back to the greg olson days in the early 2000s so it's really been the linchpin of the school uh, you always come out here everybody's excited they got the smoke for the pregame introductions cheerleaders always ready to go i mean this is what the school is really all about and 50th anniversary that's a that's a big deal um, for a school which has been so successful i think a lot of kids come out of this school graduate and have a lot of success going through college and beyond not just through sports but academically as well they've always had really sound leadership across the board and it's just a school that i think a lot of people are proud of when they leave they know that when they leave wayne hills will always be a patriot and uh, so 50th anniversary is a big deal and I know they had some festivities before the game to, to honor the school honor the district and football game is a perfect way to cap it yeah definitely and they have a, you see a lot of alumni today in the stands come to support their Wayne Hills football team that's been a part of their lives for so long and as you said before you know a slew of championships through your years and past years and hopefully one soon to come We'll see, this team's got a lot of talent. I haven't seen them play yet this year, so it'll be interesting to see how they do here at home today on a Saturday afternoon game. Obviously, they're used to playing under the lights, so this is a little bit different for them. But again, Milburn's a team that we don't expect to pose too much of a threat. So this is kind of the, one of those get right games for Wayne Hills. There, there shouldn't be as much resistance as they've had from their prior opponents. So this is the kind of game where you expect Wayne Hills to kind of fine tune everything and get back on track for the business portion of the schedule, which comes after this. Yeah, definitely, and ready to kick off here so far. Evidence Njugu and Luca Grave back to return. Oh, sorry, Hunter Hayek, not Luca Grave. And that will be kicked deep to Evidence Njugu. who will have a solid run to about the 25. So, so far this season, Jared, we've seen special teams playing a big role, you know, doing a very good job so far. W what are some things that you've noticed on special teams? I've noticed that their returns have been, their return team has been very excellent, and I think that, you know, to fine tune the small things, I think that against an opponent like Melbourne, they really should be doing that. Definitely, definitely. Time to work on some things against Melbourne. Brenda Vera lines up in the shotgun, takes it himself. Good run already, looking good at the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Wayne Hills. So right there, first play of the game, way to set the tone for Wayne Hills. Brendan Devera takes one himself for a touchdown on the first play. John, what does this speak for Milburn? Well, that was quick. Right up the gut, they all handled the guys they needed to block. Sound blocking across the board, and then Devera just blew by the safety. Whoever that was back there for Melbourne didn't stand much of a chance. I mean, absolutely a, a massive hole right up the middle for Devera, and then one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I don't even know this, if the safety knew what was coming because Devera blew through, blew through that hole very quickly. And we have Dario Cerny ready to kick. He's been doing a great job so far this season. Makes well over the majority of the extra points and field goals. Made two field goals last game. Very good job, Rarity. And puts this one through the uprights. That'll be good. Good job by junior Dario Cerny. I think so, that's just an example of Wayne Hills moving a little bit faster than the opponent right out of the gates. They have a spread offense, which I was about to say I'm excited to see. It's a little bit different from the historic Wayne Hills days of the 2000s where they would just kind of run it straight up the gut and go uh, right, right down the throats of the defense and, and kind of just win the battle up front and just grind you to a pulp by the end of the game. 
It's a little bit different these days. They have a quarterback who can handle the ball in Devera, so they'll do a variety of things to try and spread the field a little bit, uh, work laterally a little more than they used to. And the speed is obviously a big factor for Wayne Hills, and this is an offense that they're comfortable running. And right out of the gates, Milburn didn't even know what was coming. It's a little bit different of a look, and Wayne Hills knows what they're doing on offense. So I think Milburn caught napping a little bit there on the first play. Yeah, definitely. And as you said, John, a variety of players. You see Luca Grave can run the ball really well. Brendan Devere can run the ball and throw the ball very well. And a variety, mixed variety of very good, different talents in the receivers. So you see Evans Njoku, very tall, very quick. Hunter Hayek, very fast receiver. And Bensi Polgar is ready to kick off. And Bensi will send that one deep to about the 10. And that will be a very good stop for Wayne Hills. About 18 yard return, oh sorry, eight yard return to the 18 yard line. Some great kickoff Anthony coverage by Wayne, Wayne Hills right there. Well, just a lot of energy out of the gates from both sides of the ball. Special teams flying around the field. Wayne Hills clearly ready to go for this one, and uh, you just hope that Milburn has something coming on offense here. And you see that's a really good job right there on the kickoff by Anthony Puntowell. He's a sophomore. I played football with him during my years in middle school. He's a very good player, very high energy, and did a very good job right there on the kickoff. Way to show that off. So that will be a run play by Milburn with about a two-yard gain on the play. And the key if you're the overmatched team in a football game is to try and limit the possessions. You'd expect Milburn to try and stay methodical, stay within themselves early on, run some clock. The less possessions there are, the less opportunities for Wayne Hills, and the closer the game remains deep into the, into the second half. So I think Milburn's going to try and you know, stay within themselves, control the tempo of the game, and obviously not make any mistakes. That's the key because against a team like Wayne Hills, you can't afford to turn the ball over. And you see Wayne Hills stacks with three men in the box looking to blitz Brendan Devera on the play. Quarterback in the shotgun formation, and that will be a handoff and a very good stop right there by Brendan Devera. Almost put him down instantly right there. Smart play call by Coach Demikoff with the blitz. So Jared, what is one thing you've noticed throughout the year so far with the Wayne Hills defense playing at home? I just know that, that they have a lot of energy. I mean, I feel like they're in the, in the back of the field almost every play. I mean, they can really get after the quarterback and that's really what you need in the football game. Get after the quarterback, put some pressure on him. Well, you definitely, you've got players like Mike Saccone, Brendan Devera, Kai Sally, very quick players to be in the backfield. Jason Modak as well and Danny Musa on the line. Jason Modak has been having a heck of a year. And the quarterback will keep this himself and run to about the 55 yard line where he'll be brought down by 63, Mike Saccone. Sorry Brandon, that's a really good job by Ceruto there to kind of feel out the pressure. Wayne Hills was bringing guys off the edge, they rushed five and the linebackers were dropping into coverage. So a good read by Ceruto to kind of take that ball up the middle, saw the gap in the middle of the field and took advantage of it. That's a positive play for Milburn, that's gonna get their feet underneath them and give them a little bit of confidence moving forward. That's the kind of play you wanna see from an opponent early on to, to know that you're gonna have some resistance to that. Yeah, definitely, and hopefully Wayne Hills will adapt to the play call so far. We saw a lot of that the past three weeks with a lot of the screen throws from the other opposing teams have not been working as well for them either. So Peter Ceruto and Shashank Ravindranath in the backfield, and that will be handed off to Shashank Ravindranath for a gain of about two yards. So obviously we've seen that Wayne Hills has really come out of the gate pretty strong here. I found Milburn a really undermined team compared to Wayne Hills. You think they take some shots down the field sometime soon? I mean, I'm not sure, Jared. Quarterback Peter Sruto still trying to adjust the Wayne Hills defense. Wants to get used to it before probably he starts throwing the ball. Wayne Hills defense doing a pretty good job right here. Mishap on that run play. Let's see what they do here. Peter Sruto and Shashank Ravindranath back in the backfield again.
And that will be another handoff for a gain of no yards. And Jared, I think what you're going to see early on is Milburn running their offense, doing what they're most comfortable doing. And so far, they've they've stayed under control so far. I think they're going to get forced into some long down and distances from the Wayne Hills defense. They have a third and seven here. So they're going to be forced to air it out at some point. And I think at the beginning of drives on first down plays, you're going to see a lot of runs, a lot of misdirections to try and get some yardage to set themselves up for a positive down and distance. Well, I mean, they're definitely probably going to, I would assume they're going to try a pass here, a long third down, third and seven, you see. So let's see what Milburn does right here. So quarterback drops back to throw and throws it out of bounds on the play. So, John, you were right there. Third and long, had to air out the ball right there. Very good coverage by Wayne Hills. What does this speak for Milburn so far? Well, this is an interesting decision right here, what they're going to have to do on fourth down. It's a punting situation, but you might want to try and force the issue here, and they, I think they are going to bring the punt team out. But good coverage down the field by Luca Grave. Ceruto tried to have a little backyard connection there with his uh, receiver on the far side. The, the play broke down, and they tried to improvise from there. Ceruto was expecting him to curl back towards the sideline, and instead he, he went downfield, so an incompletion. Good punt by number 85 on the play. Drew Pickard, Luca Grave was immediately taken down. So that's a good job right there for the Milburn special teams, making a big play. Yeah, outstanding punt. Really got a lot of hang time behind that one. Didn't get it inside the 10, but you can't ask for much more from a high school punter because the hang time doesn't allow Wayne Hills to return anything. And let's see what Wayne Hills does after scoring on the first play of the drive in the last possession. Line up with three men in the backfield. And they'll pitch it to Luca Grave, who will run to the outside for a gain of about 10 yards, so they will have a first down. Pretty simple play call there, just letting Grave try and outrun the linebackers. Get him to the edge a little bit, get those legs moving, and a good run from him, able to fight forward for the first down. And yeah, you know, we say it over and over again, Luca Grave, great running back, always seems to break the first Sometimes even the second tackle it takes more than one person to take him down almost every play. So Brenda Vera will drop back to throw the ball and will air one out to Evidence Najoku, who completed the catch for a gain of about 40 yards. Oh, well, Najoku has such a height advantage against the corner there, and the corner never turned his head, so that was pretty simple pitch and catch. Najoku just had to turn around, reach up, and make the play. And you know, Njoku with a definite height advantage over most defensive backs in high school. Six foot five, very easy for him to get up there and make those tough catches. Yeah, his really long wingspan definitely gives him an advantage just even over defensive backs, just reach over with those long arms. And that you saw right there. So Brenda Vera will throw a short screen pass to Hunter Hayek, who will use his speed to get to the outside. And that will be a first down for Wayne Hills. So, so far the Patriots have been marching down the field. First down on every play so far. Touchdown on the first play, on the first possession. Brendan Devera and Chris Ruby in the backfield. And Brendan Devera will throw to Hunter Hayek for a game of about 12 yards. First down, Wayne Hills, first and goal. So now this will be interesting play calling by Wayne Hills right here. Second and goal, about two, first and goal, sorry, about two yards away from the end zone. John, what do you think they're going to do here? I mean, they have a ton of options right now. Everything's working so far against Milburn. Is this the kind of spot where you can you can pick your guy if you're Wayne Demikoff and, and John Jacobs, the offensive coordinator? Whoever needs confidence, give them the ball right now because they're probably going to score. And John, you were right. A quick handoff to Luca Grave. Did a great job. 
Huge hole in the middle of the field. Took advantage of that and touched down Wayne Hill. Oh, I like that because Grave is your guy. He only has two touchdowns through the first four games. Give him a simple handoff up the middle and great push by the offensive line there. Grave walked into the end zone. Zachman will again hold Cerny. Will again, we have Dario Cerny kicking the extra point. Made 98% of his field goals last season. And will put his second one through the uprights today. Very reliable kicker. So that's another positive thing for Wayne Hills. Yeah, at the high school level, it's really vital to have a really good kicker on your team because as we saw last week with uh, Old Japan, that one missed field goal almost came back to bite them. So every single uh, extra point they have that they can convert really helps. Definitely, and Dario Cerny's been doing a great job of that so far in his football career. So six minutes and 22 seconds left in the first quarter, and Wayne Hills is up 14-0, and they are kicking off currently. So when you look at Wayne Hills special teams, you see some guys on kickoff. Benty Pulgar, the kicker, Get some defi definitely get some range there. Kick it very far down the field. You have some quick players, Kai, Sally, Chris Ruby, some guys that could get to the ball fast. Jared, how have they done so far on their special teams? They've been really executing on special teams and they've really been getting down other side of the field to stop the returners. So Betsy will line up to kick. And we'll send another one deep to about the 10 yard line where it will be returned by number 88, Meisenheim Jack Meisenheimer, who will take it to about the 35. Well, there's a good return from Milburn. I'm interested to see how their offense comes out here after getting punched in the mouth again. The defense has provided absolutely zero resistance against. Wayne Hill so far, so it'll be up to the offense to try and take a little momentum back, work the clock a little bit, and kind of stem this Wayne Hill's tide, which has been in full force since snap number one. And we see Wayne Hill's lining up again with three men in the box. Jason Modak, Danny Musa, and Kai Sally. So you have two quick players on the outside and a big, strong player in the middle. Good play calling by Wayne Demikoff, the coach for Wayne Hill's. And that will be another handoff by Milburn to Shashank Ravindranath. And almost no gain on the carry. So John, so far we've seen the handoffs not been working out for Milburn. Passes didn't look out, look too good either for them. What do they have to do in this game to be successful? Well, they're gonna have to take some chances now down 14 and obviously have a lot stacked against them. Eventually you are gonna see them spread the field a little bit, try and go down the field if Ceruto has the arm to do that. Um, but I think right now they're just trying to get positive yardage and, and do something productive to get themselves some confidence. And that'll be a screen pass. And he'll be stopped by Tyler Hayek and the Brendan pass Devera. Complete pass complete to number 35, Will Twombly. And that was a good job Brendan recognizing Devera the play by the Wayne Hills defense. Tyler Devera, Devera looks a little sh shooken up on the play. Well, that's the thing right now. Wayne Hills is so comfortable in their defense, and they have so many athletes that even if Milburn executes, which they did execute the play call there very well, Wayne Hills will snuff it out after a short gain. So it doesn't really matter what Wayne Demikoff calls right now as long as the players stay disciplined, understand their responsibilities on defense, and Milburn will only be gaining small doses at a time. So another third and long situation for Milburn. Interesting to see what they're going to do here, and it looks to see that he will drop back and pass and the pass will be incomplete. And it looks like it will be another punting situation for Milburn. So something interesting we've seen so far, Jared, Milburn, third and long on both drive, on both possessions so far. Try to pass it and neither have been complete. Jared, what do they have to do to change that? Their line seems to be doing a good enough job. What do the receivers have to do? Well, they really need to try to get down the field and just make their catches like this last play. It looked like the receiver might have been able to make a play on the ball, but it seems like he just dropped it. That was a good play by DiCarlo, though. Did break that up as in the secondary. They see Luca Grave returning the punt and stopped instantly again by number 88, 
Jack Meisenheimer. And the punter for Milburn has been looking pretty good so far, but that's one of the few things I've seen that's been looking so good for them so far. And I think, unfortunately, we might be seeing a lot more of the Milburn punter today. Right now, for them, that's not the worst result. They were able to run some plays. They executed. They were not able to pick up the first down. But baby steps for Milburn, who came out of the gates very slow. And they do have a penalty a on that punt. that will be holding against holding Wayne Hills. Against the so the ball will be brought back. As we've seen in the last couple of games, penalties have really hurt Wayne Hills. They've, it's really hurt them like later in the games that we've seen. I think that they really need to cut down the penalties. What do you guys think? Well, yes, definitely. I mean, penalties often on especially special teams. Holding is a big one that you see both on offense and defensive side. you got to watch out for that. And I think in bigger games, those matter a lot more than on a day like today. But like we said, this is a get-right game for Wayne Hills. Get that offense fully on track, get everybody comfortable and confident in what they're doing. And penalties are the kind of thing you don't want to see, especially in a game like this where you're in full control. No need for mental mistakes. Uh, no need to give the other team any breaks when you're so far in control. And a low snap right there to Brendan Devera, but he will take that one himself and run it and he's pushing through almost the entire Milburn defense for a first down. So you see there, one advantage that Wayne Hills definitely has over Milburn is, I would say, size. Milburn, not a very big team. Brendan Devereaux was able to just push through five or six defenders right there, get for the first down. He's a very physical quarterback. He's a guy that can do a lot of things. I mean, that's more size than you're used to seeing from a quarterback. Also more athleticism and speed than most quarterbacks. So that gives Wayne Hills a big advantage right out of the get-go, and it's been clear from, from the first snap of this game. One team is here ready to play, and the other team just can't really match up. Well, yeah, definitely, and Brendan DeVar standing 6'2", 235 pounds, so the pass to Evidence Njoku will be complete for a gain of about nine yards. And Brendan DeVar just having an overall great game today. I mean, he already has a rushing touchdown. Almost I believe every pass has been complete so far for Brendan Devera, and looks to be a good day for him so far. Let's see if he'll keep it up. Yeah, what you're looking for from Devera today is just consistency. You want him to run the offense. You don't want to see any any unforced errors. This is the kind of game where you expect things to be on target from him because he's very comfortable with where he is right now. There's three men in the backfield for Wayne Hills. And there'll be a handoff to Luca Grave, who will get the first down, and then some, breaking the first two tackles, as I said. Usually does that, does a very good job breaking tackles, never stops moving his feet, and that's one of the key things you want to see in a running back. This is one of those games, if you're Wayne Hills, you want to throw a perfect game. You want to execute every play, no missed assignments. You want this to be the tutorial video moving forward. This is how you run the offense. This is how you spread the ball around to everybody. And this is how we set up blocks and open up space for our skill players who have a lot of skill. So this is the kind of game for Wayne Hills where you want to stay focused. It's easy to lose focus in a game like this, especially later on. And you want everybody to be just as sharp from snap one all the way until the end of the game. So you see another handoff to Luca Grave. And the offensive line gave him a pretty big hole right there for a gain about six yards. And, you know, as you said, it's definitely the key is about staying focused. See, games like this, you gain a lot of confidence early on. Sometimes the team tends to lose focus, not try as hard, but you want to keep going, stay consistent, as you said, and keep trying turn this into almost a tutorial game. So, Jared, so far today, Wayne Hills has not had to bring out the punting team. Let's hope that they don't have to do that all day, but what do you think the outcome will be? As in terms of, like, Punting or the game in general? Um, punting throughout the game. Yeah, I think that Wayne Hills, their goal should be really try to avoid having that uh, punting team out. Try to, you know, fine tune the things like passing game, the rushing game. You know, maybe try a new player too. And it seems I almost jinxed it there. Luca Grave stopped early on for a loss of about three yards, third and long. Let's see what Brendan Devera will do here, assuming Wayne Demikoff will call for a pass play. And one, notice, one difference I've noticed from Wayne Hill's teams of the past until now, they're giving the signals non-verbally from the sideline. Back in the day, they used to run the quarterback all the way to the sideline to get the call verbally from the coach. That's a nice adjustment, something you see a lot more often in football these days. 
And it was a pass play, but unfortunately, slightly overthrown to Hunter Hayek. So it will be a fourth and long situation. Let's see what the Wayne Hills Patriots will do here. No, well that goes back to what we were just saying about trying to throw a perfect game today. Not going to happen after that throw. That was a little bit overthrown, but that's the kind of ball if you're a quarterback in a bigger situation, running a bubble screen to the right, you got to hit that throw. So Wayne Hills will go for it here. Brendan Farrow dropping back for the pass, and Evidence Njoku wide open for a touchdown. And that's a great job right there by Brendan Navarra. Great vision in the field. Sees he has Evidence Njoku wide open at the five yard line, throws it to him, runs it in for an easy touchdown. So John, what do you think right there? What was the key problem for Milburn's defense? Well, the corner got shooken off pretty easily by Njoku. He was able to blow right by them. He's got a lot of speed, a lot of size. And good job by Njoku as well to recognize that he was a good 40, 50 yards down the field, realized Devera probably wasn't going to be able to hit him in stride. So a good job turning his head, finding the ball, and coming back to it to make the catch. And here we see again Dario Cerny. The field goal is good. So, so far, Dario Cerny, three for three on extra points on the day. 21-0, Wayne Hills with a minute and 25 seconds left in the first quarter. So as we saw on that fourth down play right there, it was a really aggressive play that Coach Demikoff called right there. What do you guys think of the play? Well, definitely an aggressive play, but I think he knows that his Wayne Hills offense was able to get the job done as they did. They executed the play greatly. Brendan Devera throwing the long pass to Evidence, and I think one of the keys right there was Coach Demikoff having confidence in his team, and that's important. You want to see that a coach has confidence in his team, knowing that they can get the job done, and especially think, on the fourth downs and thirds downs. I think Coach Demikoff knows where the promise lies for his team. They're going to play some better teams later in the season, and right now Njoku is obviously a massive threat. He's a guy who can be a major impact player in the second half of the season. Only six catches through the first four games, and I think the Patriots would love to get him going, get his confidence up, Get him comfortable going up for balls deep down the field because he is a deep ball type of threat. And I think that's the biggest reason you're seeing Wayne Hills go to Evidence Njoku in this first quarter because he is kind of an X factor. You know what you have in the Hayek brothers. You know what they're going to give you. They're going to be there for you all season long. But if you can get a third option like Njoku going in the passing game, it makes Wayne Hills even more dynamic. And you know I have to agree right there. New to the Evidence is new to the program. You want to see him get comfortable, and they're doing a great job of Make him comfortable today. And Benty Polgar will send that one deep. And it will be returned to about the 30-yard line by number eight for Milburn, Matt Sullivan. And another tackle by Anthony Puntalillo for Wayne Hills. And as I said, very high energy player, knows how to get down the field. I remember for a long time, kickoff is one of his favorite things. He loves to just fly down the field, just take people's heads off. He's been doing a great job of that so far. And that's what you want from your special teamers, especially for guys who aren't playing offense or defense. You want all that bottled up energy that's been hanging out on the sidelines throughout the game to come out on that, that one 10 second sprint down the field. Just kind of run like, you know, nothing to lose. Just get down there as quick as you can, make the play. And that's what you love to see from your special teamers. And that'll be no gain on the play for Milburn. With Cerruto on, on the carry. And you see, that's a good job right there by the Wayne Hills defensive line. Danny Musa and Anthony Cuso with the joint tackle right there. No gain on the play, second and long. These are the situations Wayne Hills wants to put themselves in on defense. And you can see Milburn already slowing down the tempo. They know that they're just trying to weather the storm right now and not let this one get too far out of hand. They're in no rush to get their offense moving, just trying to execute. As the clock slowly runs down, for the first quarter, 38 seconds left. And that'll be a keeper for a gain of about five yards on the play. On the and that is a good job by Milburn's number 35. Oh, yeah, Will Twombly. Oh, throwing in a nice little wrinkle there is Milburn, a little wildcat with Twombly. It's good to mix it up, good to give Wayne Hills a different look. And they got a positive gain on that play. So we see another third down situation for Milburn. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. Not as long, about third and four. Last two third downs are about third and seven. Incomplete pass were thrown. So maybe they'll run the ball in this next play. The the so the, as the first quarter comes to a close, 21 to zero, Wayne Hills. 
John, what do you think that Milburn will have to do to pick up the game a little bit and calm the storm, as you said? Well, I think they need to pick up their energy level a little bit and play for some pride. This game may or may not be decided already at this point. So for for Milburn, you kind of want to play for the name on the front of the jersey. Don't let this one get too out of hand. You don't want to be that embarrassing score in the paper tomorrow. Play for pride. Play for the guy next to you. Try and make Wayne Hills work for their touchdowns a little bit. I mean, 21 nothing after one quarter is about as wide of a margin as you can have. So if you're Milburn, there needs to be a little extra motivation, a little extra want to from their guys. I think that's what the coaching staff is going to try and do. This isn't one of those consoling type of moments if you're the Millers. This is one of those kind of light, light a fire under your guys a little bit, get them going, and, and try and get them to believe in themselves that they can play with this Wayne Hills team. It's 11 guys on both sides. There's no reason that they should be this far behind this early. Yeah, you know, I definitely have to agree. I mean, and you know, you talk about high school football, it's all players who are the same age group, usually about the same height, weight, stuff like that. So there really is no reason for them to be down 21 nothing by the end of the first quarter. So it really is right now, I have to agree about the energy level, playing for the guy next to you, just wanting to not embarrass your team and calm the storm a little bit. And put up, really I'm seeing, I don't want to see a defensive stand here. Wayne Hills is scoring 21 points in one quarter. And the first play of this game really told you all you need to know. Devera going right up the middle with a quarterback keeper and going the distance. That should never happen. Defense needs to be a little bit more prepared and ready to go than that. You ex if there's one play where your defense is going to be flying all over the field, you expect it to be the first play of the game. And they came out slow. They came out lethargic. And Devera took advantage on the first play. And Wayne Hills hasn't looked back. So we see Milburn offense comes back onto the field for the third and fourth, second quarter. We'll begin shortly. They have Peter Ceruto back, the quarterback position again. And he will look for the pass, which will be incomplete. The pass intended for number 85, intended Drew, for number Pickard 85 Drew Pickard. And, you know, so far today, you know, Milburn has trouble on their offense and their defense. And we know this because Milburn averaging only seven points a game so far this year, starting their season 0-3. Looks to be it'll be 0-4 after today. And in order to just put up a stand against the Wayne Hills Patriots, they're going to have to try and score points. Yeah, that was a simple slant route or an in route there, and Ceruto missed the target. If he had completed the pass, the receiver was open, it would have been an easy first down. So the punt will go out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. And, you know, one of the big things for Milburn today, execution. They have failed to execute many of their offensive plays. Every pass is, almost every pass has been incomplete so far. I believe one completion, which was a screen pass. And they're definitely going to have to be, they're definitely going to have to execute better if they want to put up an offensive stand today against the Patriots. So the Patriots offense will be back on the field. And as you said, they will be verbally giving them the Brendan DeVera the plays. Two men in the backfield for the Wayne Hills Patriots. DeVera drops back to throw, has time. And sends one deep to Evidence Njoku, who is clearly held on the play. And that will be a defensive holding or pass interference. It's going to be on Matthew Skol Skolnick, the defensive back for Milburn, but Devera missed a wide open receiver. Grave was streaking down the field at the Milburn 40, but Devera went for the home run with Najoku. If you're Skolnick in that spot, you got to try and pick up the ball because that ball was overthrown by a good margin. And so even if he hadn't hit Najoku, it would have been an incompletion, but instead he runs into the receiver and gives Wayne Hills an automatic first down. Yeah, not a very smart play right there by Skolnick. And you see, Brendan DeVera right there had a few options. He had a good had a good margin to run. Could have definitely gotten the first down if he wanted to, but he went for the home run right there, you say, or the touchdown, and wanted to score some points on the day. But you can't really blame him after the outcome so far. So again, two men in the backfield for the Patriots. Brendan DeVera will drop back to pass again. And is overthrown for the second time on this possession. Yeah, that's a miscommunication between Devera and Tyler Hayek. Hayek kind of ran that deep curl route, and Devera was expecting the seam down the far sideline, and 
Hayek just kind of stopped the route. Not sure if that was a, a read route from Hayek or if there was a miscommunication on the play call. But Devere had not tried to air it out. We've seen that throughout the game today. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you talk about miscommunications, and oftentimes when you're verbally giving, well, not verbally, but you're giving signs to the offense, and that's how you're doing your play calls, there can be miscommunications. So three men in the backfield right now, and there'll be a handoff to Luca Grave, who will get the first down and then some, breaking two tackles, and brings it to the Melbourne 18. So that's a really good job right there by Luca Grave. Has a lot of yards already today, looking to get more. It's only the second quarter. Has one touchdown, looking to get another. And that's a, that's a really good play by Joe Petrilli, the linebacker for Milburn. Didn't give up on the play. Grave was able to shake the safety there, and if Petrilli had not gotten downfield to make that tackle, it would have been a touchdown. So got to give credit to the guys who aren't giving up for Milburn, but a good run by Grave. Definitely a good run by Grave. And again, two men in the backfield for Wayne Hills Patriots. Brendan Devera and Chris Ruby. And, you know, Chris Ruby's been doing a really good job today in the backfield. Very good blocking running back. He's big guy, very physical. Oh, Brendan Devera airs one out right there to Tyler Hayek. Incomplete. And, you know, that's one thing you look, uh, Wayne Hills has that they do very well at. They have running backs that can not only block but also run the ball. They have a variety of running backs. You see Chris Ruby, Luca Grave, a few other guys that do a very good job. Sometimes you even have Hunter Hayek running the ball. And it's just a triple threat right there in the backfield for most defenses. Well, that's one thing Wayne Hills has always had on their on their side, which is depth. That's what that's a sign of a good program, not just a good starting eleven, but a program that goes deep into the the lower classes, get the freshmen, the sophomores, the juniors involved, and that's what Wayne Hills has always had. So Brendan Devera throws a screen pass to Hunter Hayek, and it is complete for a gain of about nine yards, eight yards, sorry, on the play. And Wayne Hills slowly approaching the end zone again, looking for their fourth touchdown on the day. Well, they're trying to get Devera a little bit back within the offense here. Some quick hitters, some shorter passes, get everybody involved as opposed to those deep balls that he's been kind of selling out for in this quarter. And we see Tyler Hayek taken out of the game, seems to be a little bit shaken up. Hunter Goldberg has been put in. Let's see if he can do anything for the Wayne Hills Patriots offense. And touchdown by Brendan Devera on the keeper. So that is two rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown already on the day for Brendan Devera with 10 minutes left in the second quarter. Well, he, has a, he has a really good feel for running, Brandon. Devera is not your average quarterback. He's not a guy who's going to sit in the pocket all day. Saw the C and was able to, to shake off the, the hit from the linebacker there, kind of spin off the hit and find the end zone. He's a big-time weapon. Wayne Hills has to keep him healthy. We'll see how long he plays in this game, but a good performance from him today. And Dario Cerny will be attempting the extra point and put his fourth one through on the day. So four for four on extra points, four touchdowns so far for Wayne Hills with 10 minutes left in the second quarter. Milburn not putting up a defensive stand for Wayne Hills. Yeah, the Patriots are looking pretty strong out there. And John, obviously you're an alumni here and you've seen some really strong Wayne Hills teams with a lot of weapons. How do you think these guys with the weapons they have match up to other teams? I would say the immediate four or five guys that we're seeing involved here, Devera, Grave, both Hayek brothers and Njoku, those five are as good of a five as I've seen at Wayne Hills. And obviously there's been a lot of talent to come through. Uh, we saw Mike Quinn in my days and Kevin Olson at the tail end of it. Uh, as well as you know, a lot of the GM Papa brothers and um, the running backs have always been a staple of the program as well. But those were those were guys that understood the system. They stayed within themselves. They played together well as a team. The sheer talent of those five skill players for Wayne Hills, I think, is as good as I've seen. They're individually all tremendous athletes, and not to say that the the skill players of years past weren't, but I think those were guys that were more team guys. Not to say that these guys aren't team guys, but these guys are freakish athletically. I don't think Wayne Hills has had this much height at the wide receiver position from the you know when you include the five to six years worth of football that I saw here at Wayne Hills. They had a lot of guys that were athletic. They were speedy, but the the height of the Hayek brothers and Najoku is something I've never seen from a Wayne Hills offense. Definitely, and Bensi Polgar back to kick again. 
will send it deep as he's been doing today. And a muffed catch. We'll run it back to about the 20 where he'll be taken down by Hunter Goldberg and Anthony Cuso. And the other thing I'll say about the, the offense of Wayne Hills this year versus years past is the style is very different. John Jacobs, the offensive coordinator, has implemented the spread here, which they've done for the past couple of years. But I think that spread suits this group of talent a lot better than, other Wayne, than it would have served other Wayne Hills teams. Wayne Hills was always strong in the middle. They were always strong up front, and they were able to run the ball consistently. That was kind of the staple of Chris Olsen's offenses. But now with all this height and athleticism on the outside for the Patriots, I think that their current system actually suits them better because they're able to get the ball to the playmakers on the outside, get the ball down the field with a quarterback in Devera who has a very nice arm from what I've seen. And so I think this style fits this team extremely well. Definitely. And you see the run play right there for a gain of about one yard for Milburn. So Wayne Hill's defensive line has been pretty much doing exactly what they've needed to do so far this game. Jason Modak, Danny Musa, Pete Delachai, Ty Sally, all defensive linemen that have been doing a great job today stopping the run game for the Milburn offense. And it seems that Milburn's running back, Shashank Ravindranath, has been injured on the play as he goes down trying to walk off the field. And he's holding his leg there. One of the very scary things you don't want to see as a coach ever, or anybody ever. Yeah, it goes from bad to worse for Milburn. You don't want to lose your starting running back, especially in a game that's kind of already been decided, but we hope the best for Ravindra Nath. They're going to need him throughout the year. So the trainer comes onto the field to check him out. Let's hope he is okay. And this would be a big loss, as you said, for Milburn. I mean, they're already having enough trouble on the day to have to bring in a new player who's not as acquainted to the offense, doesn't know it as well, will definitely stir it up even more. Yeah, but it does provide an opportunity for a younger guy to come in and try and make an impact. I mean, these are the types of games, if you're Milburn, you're probably gonna try and get some other guys in and get them experience. And you, you kind of learn a lot about your team on days like this because you start to work in the sophomores and the juniors, and you'll see very clearly which guys want to be out there and which guys want to go home and watch college football today because everyone's going to get an opportunity. Some guys are just going to kind of sink into the lull that is this 28 nothing score, and then other guys are going to step up. They're going to be flying around the field. They're going to be excited to be out there and get the opportunity, and those are the guys that are going to get more leash moving forward. Yeah, definitely, and we see a new running back in the backfield. That will be a screen pass from Milburn for a gain of about two yards. So it'll be another third and long situation, about third and five, third and six. Let's see what they will do here. So far, every third down, incomplete pass from Milburn. Had to bring out the punting unit on every fourth down so far. They tried to run a, an in route from the receiver on the near side in this exact situation last drive. We'll see what they do here. You gotta put some faith in your quarterback, Ceruto. He's had a couple of nice plays, a couple of tough ones so far. Yeah, we see he's the only person in the backfield. Very spread out offense for Milburn, looking to pass the ball. And it will be a handoff, surprisingly enough, and they will be stopped for a loss of yards on the play. And you see right there, that's something where they could have used Shashank Ravindranath. They had to hand it off instead, number 35, Will Twombly, who couldn't gain the yards on the play. Lost about 10 yards, and it'll be fourth and 12. Yeah, Luca Milburn. Grave completely blew that play up, coming in off the edge there, flying in, a lot of speed from this Wayne Hills defense. I mean, how often do you see a loss of nine on a running play? Yeah, definitely, and that's something like to see from Luca Grave, not only an offense, but also a defensive threat because of his speed. And Milburn will punt that one, a short punt. Will only go for about 30 yards. And there's a penalty marker down on the play. It looks like it's going to be on DiCarlo. We'll see what the call is.
It looks like tripping on Wayne Hill, so they'll back him up a little bit. And it shouldn't be too much of a problem for Wayne Hills. They'll still have great field position. It was only about a 30-yard kick. So it looks like they'll start this one at about their own 45. So, uh, yes, about their own 45-yard line. So still a great field position. They've been doing a, their offense has been doing a great job anyway so far today. So let's see what they'll have to do with this drive. Yeah, just more real estate to work with. These guys have been sharp all day long and spreading the wealth. Raffle, which is taking place today. They will be in both sides of the field, in both bleachers. The 50-50. 160 to the winner right now. Brenda Vera back to throw. And we'll leave the pocket. And we'll send one deep to Evidence Najoku. A lot of hand checking from both guys there, Brandon. Yeah, no definitely. Call. And you know that's one of those calls that's hard to make as a referee because you see it checking a lot of both players a lot, so you're not sure who to call that on. And I like that no call. You don't want to cut Wayne Hills any more breaks in, than they need. Najoku there was getting touched though by the defensive back for Milburn. I like it from Devera though, trying to get Najoku uh, some more looks. He's obviously been the biggest threat deep down the field in this game. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage, so threw it up to him and a simple jump ball that ended up incomplete. Yeah, and you know, Wayne Hills had multiple threats today. You see Hunter Hay getting a lot of the screen passes, Evidence Njuku downfield, Brendan Devera and Luka Grave both doing a great job running the ball, gaining a lot of yards so far. So they've had a variety of plays so far. So Brendan Devera to throw again, and that will be a screen to Tyler Hayek who will complete that pass and will get a first down and is tripped up at about the 45, 35 yard line. Penalty marker is down on the play. Well, interesting decision by Tyler to cut that one across the field and it served him pretty well. Got some good blocking in the middle of the field from his offensive line. I wonder if this is a legal man down field call from the referee, but we'll see what they decide to do. Either way, though, good decision there by Tyler to, to find some space on the near side. And if I'm Wayne Hills, I, I really like what I'm seeing out there. I mean, they've been really able to do whatever they want, whether it's run, pass, throw some screens. Yeah, there might be two fouls on this play, guys. Looks like there's a, there's a marker on the far side, maybe a, a blocking violation on the Patriots. There it is. There's one so far against the Patriots. So two against the Patriots, the block in the back was declined. And then an unsportsmanlike conduct called on the Patriots. So I'm not quite sure, I didn't see that one there, John. Did you happen to see the unsportsmanlike conduct? I didn't see it, but it was pretty far down the field, right around the area where Hayek was tackled. I'm not sure, it may have been on him, though he was very frustrated after kind of tripping. Knew he may have had a touchdown, but instead he fell. So maybe uh, some, some language from him, perhaps but it's pretty clear the referees are gonna keep the, the Wayne Hill celebrations in check. And that is a 25 yard penalty, so that went from a very positive to a ne very negative play for Wayne Hills very quickly. Let's see what they will do on this second and very long. I think Wayne Hills might be happy about this challenge. Second and 10 was too easy for him. So you see Brendan Vera back to pass again. And he throws the ball to Hunter Hayek, who's open and gets the first down. So that right there, very good job by Brendan DeVera. They get the first down. Got a play called back, but picked up momentum very quickly and get a first down on the first play after the penalty. I believe that was second and 32, if my math is right. And DeVera hit Hayek perfectly in stride there. Beautiful throw. It seems like Brendan is more comfortable throwing off of one foot off a slow jog than he is standing tall in the pocket. He's not your typical pocket passer, but he, he's able to get it done at the high school level for sure. Well, you're definitely in a, you, That's very good chemistry right there. I saw Hunter Hayek calling for the ball. Brendan Devera picked that up very quickly, threw it as quick as he could right after he waved his hand, and that's how he turned small gains into big ones. Three men in the backfield for Wayne Hills. Devera with the throw to Hunter Hayek again for a screen pass, and Hunter Hayek will have the first down, I believe. And that will move the chains once again for Wayne Hills. So Wayne Hills in the red zone so far today has been four for four, scored every time they've entered the red zone. 
What do you think, John? You think they'll be five for five so far today on the day? I don't see why not. This offense is clear. You see a lot of passing on this drive so far. Not too much of the run game, but three rushing touchdowns for the Patriots already. So they're definitely trying to gain some confidence in their receivers, want to get them some touchdowns. Today. Yeah, I think they wanted to get Hunter the ball a little bit here. He's kind of been the forgotten man, and he is the go-to receiver. We see Brent Navarro drops back again and lets one go out of bounds. There were a few people open on the play, but a few Milburn offensive li defensive linemen, sorry, got into the backfield on that play and jumbled him up a bit. Yeah, I like that for Milburn. They're going to call a, f a grounding penalty here. I thought he was far enough out of the tackle box when he made that throw. And if the ball definitely made it to the past the line of scrimmage, so I'm not sure about this call, but they are going to continue to challenge the Patriots by backing them up there. But right now I think they're trying to get everybody involved and throw the football a little bit and get everybody involved but they're going to they're going to back him up here which is an interesting call. Yeah, I would certainly have to agree with you. It seemed that he was at far enough out of the pocket to get rid of that one, but and that right there is the first breakdown we've seen all day from the Wayne Hills offensive line. Give some credit to Milburn kind of bullying him around a little bit here. So 6 minutes and 15 seconds left in the second quarter. Wayne Hills up 28 to nothing. And if they do score this touchdown, I believe the mercy rule will keep the clock running for the entire second half. Yes, I believe you're right. We were asked before the game. 35 points is the mercy rule to keep the clock running in the second half and get everybody home quicker. So Brenda Vera back to pass. Has much more time. And the pass is to Tyler Hayek, but it'll be intercepted by Passes number 88 for Milburn, Jack Meisenheimer. And you know, that's a really good job right there by the Milburn defense. We see for once putting up a stand in the end zone. They'll get a touchback and bring it back to the 20-yard line. So they'll get a chance here. A little humble pie there for Devera, who's just been airing the ball down the field at will. Kind of just relentlessly slinging it to his big receiving threats. But nice job there by Milburn. A good, good push from their defensive line and then a good play from the secondary. So a little bit of momentum for the Millers for the first time today. Here's where we'll see do the... Milburn Millers pick up some momentum and do well on offense as well as they did on defense. Looks like they do have a, a good number of players playing on both sides of the ball. So the momentum carries over a little bit more in high school football when you have players playing both ways. And there's a player in the backfield for Milburn with the injury to Ravinger Nath. And the ball will be handed off for a loss of yards for a loss of a yard on the play. And that one was handed off to number 44, Nick Tortorello. And a good job by J.D. Modak there, the defensive end for the Patriots, to shed the defender and make the tackle for no gain. And the Wayne Hills defense right there, stopping it early, making sure that, hey, we had a rough offensive possession right there. Not rough, it was, it was actually a pretty good possession until that last drive right there. Right there, they threw the interception, but Wayne Hill's defense doing a good job saying, hey, we're not gonna let that happen here on the defense. We're gonna make sure that we stop them. And we see Ravinger Nath is back in the game for Milburn. And that will be a penalty, which will certainly be against Wayne Hills. Yeah, Tyler Hayek decided to shove the receiver into his own bench there at the end of the play, so that'll be a penalty on him. And I'm interested to see if they'll call this on as either a unsportsmanlike conduct or a holding because I believe it was still during the play. It could be illegal contact because it's right around when the quarterback was throwing the ball, but I think they did call pass interference. So an automatic first down. And that's those things, Jared, that you were talking about earlier. Penalties could be really big or really small for Wayne Hills. In a game like this, you don't really want to make stupid penalties. It's a learning experience, but still, you don't want to make those stupid penalties that'll get a loss of yards or even first downs for the offense of Milburn. Yeah, for sure. Those two uh, penalties earlier in the game, there was a, I think it was a 25-yard loss at some point. It really hurt that. Eventually, they did wind up uh, going into uh, Milburn's territory, but not a good penalties. Yeah, and that's a good job right there by Dom DiCarlo, recognizing the play there. Only a two-yard gain on the pass. 
one of the few completed passes we've seen from Milburn to Tanner Partol. Well, that was a good job by Milburn to recognize they had two receivers and only one corner set up for Wayne Hills. Probably dropping back into his zone there, but good read by Ceruto to get the ball to the open receiver. You see a very young team for Milburn, only about 12 seniors. And that'll be intercepted by Hunter Hayek. And Wayne Hill's offense will get another shot to score a touchdown before the end of the half. Nice pick out there. I remember uh, the last game Hills played, the last home game. Weren't too many turnovers, but I think it's very encouraging to see the defense making some turnovers. I mean, they've been able to stop the run this game, and obviously the pass too, but to capitalize on some turnovers, I think that's really good for our defense. Well, yeah, I'd have to agree with you right there and giving Milburn a little bit of a taste of their own medicine, as some people would say. As they picked off the ball earlier, Hunter said, hey, nobody does that to my brother. Off the ball for the Wayne Hills defense. This will be a handoff to Luca Grave for a gain of about six yards on the play. And that interception right there from Wayne Hills was a product of the pressure they were able to provide. They had two guys rushing off the edge. They both got to Ceruto and sandwiched him pretty hard at his own 20. And so he was kind of in desperation mode just trying to get rid of the football, and that's when bad things happen. Yeah, definitely. And you never want to play when you're desperate. You know, you don't want to play nervous or desperate. That's when you make turnovers and bad plays. So another handoff to Luca Grave, who will run for the first down, dragging players with him. And he's having a great day, too. They're de definitely building his confidence, giving him the ball a lot. He has a, one rushing touchdown so far. I think they're looking to give him another one. They've been handing him the ball this so far, this possession. Let's see if he can turn it into something big. And I like the change of pace here from Wayne Hills. They were letting Devera air it out. Now they're going to feed Grave, let the clock run, and try and avoid those turnovers. So a little more conservative here, trying to get us down to halftime, three, just over three minutes to play here in the second quarter. So three men in the backfield for Wayne Hills. You see Chris Ruby again in the backfield blocking for Brendan DeVera, and I think he's been a major key for Brendan DeVera having so much time in the pocket to throw right there. Brendan DeVera decided to keep it. Good decision by him, gain about nine yards. Eight yards, sorry. So it'll be second and two. So right there you see a dual threat. You had Chris Ruby and Luca Grave both in the backfield. Obviously Chris Ruby to block and Luca Grave usually to run, but he was blocking on that play too. So that's an interesting play call right there by Coach Demikoff. Yeah, versatility is definitely really important for any team. And it's great to see that Hills really has that versatility. So that will be a pass to Hunter Hayek who will have a little more than a first down. And we see another injured player. Looks like Will Twombly got hit where the sun does not shine. Yeah, he got, maybe got a hand caught in that collision there with Hayek. But these Wayne Hills players, they're physical, they pack a punch. You better, better be ready when contact is coming. And this is something you don't want to see from Milburn second time today that they've had a player go down. But I do expect a speedy recovery for this one. Oh, we certainly hope so. It looked like he might have got his left arm caught in that tackle. So hopefully a quick recovery here. But I think this has to be a, a nice contest for Wayne Hills. It's got to feel good for them because all of their games so far have been close. And they're the largest margin of defeat or victory was 11 points. So all their games were decided by 11 points or less. Three of the four were one possession games. So this has to be, uh, an, it's really nice to get an easy one in here in the middle stages of the season because normally this is the part of the schedule where the competition picks up and every game starts to get closer as the other teams have more tape to work with and try and figure out Wayne Hill. So this is normally where it gets tougher for Wayne Hills this part of the year. Right now it's getting a little bit easier for them. Different schedule this year than they're used to seeing. There are some teams on the slate that are, are not the conventional rivals. So they'll get to face some teams that there's not going to be as much adrenaline, not as much juice in those matchups. So the, the, the opponent might not come out with as much 
energy as we would see from playing a team like a Ramapo or a Wayne Valley on a week in and week out basis. So without without as much adrenaline from the opponent, I think it actually makes things a little bit easier for Wayne Hills. And, and playing a team like this, who is not a team they've seen before, yeah, I think this, this becomes a little bit easier for them. And we'll see how it plays out against some of the other teams that they're not used to seeing. But next week against Pascac Valley, that is a team they have a bit of a rivalry with. They've played them over the years. And so you expect PV to come out ready to go, especially at home. Yeah, I definitely agree. So two minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Brenda Vera draws back deep to throw and sends one into the end zone to Tyler Hayek, who will drop the pass. They completely mistimed that jump. Beautiful read by Devera. They had a couple guys down the field and he saw Tyler wide open in the corner, put it on the money and Tyler was all alone and jumped a little bit too early and the ball hit him as he was reaching the ground at the end of that jump. So just a, a opportunity there for Wayne Hills. You know, I think that was a good play call by Brendan Devera. He did have Hunter Hayek wide open on the side, but it would have only been a screen play as opposed to throwing it to Tyler Hayek, who was deep in the end zone, wide open. Just an unlucky play right there for Wayne Hills. So Brendan Devera will be deep to throw again, this time to Hunter Hayek in the same type of position, but Brendan Devera slightly overthrows that one. Same route there in the post corner. They tried one brother, then they tried the other brother. This time around, Devera a little too long on the throw, but Wayne Hills going right back to the well. That's the kind of thing you can do in a game like this. If the execution from almost everybody was good, you can run the play again and hope to nail it on the next try. So this is the time of the game where you can work on things. And they almost hit it on the first play, and then they went for it again. This time the throw was a little bit long. So third and 10 for Wayne Hills. Brendan Devera will probably be looking to throw, so he drops back for the pass here. And lets one go to Luca Grave, who completes the pass and is down at the one yard line. That's a beautiful throw from Devera. They had that route covered. They had the safety coming in from over the top. The linebacker was running right with, right with Grave. But Devera, just a perfect throw, threading the needle to Grave, who's not your typical Wayne Hills running back. Usually, these guys are shocky, run between the tackles real well. Grave can spread it wide and catch the ball as well. So he is one of the many weapons on this Wayne Hills offense. And as you said, that's an impeccable throw by Brendan Devera, finding the window right there, making one of those very close passes, but executed perfectly on that play. So it'll be third and one for Wayne Oh, sorry, first and goal for Wayne Hills on the one yard line. And Luca Grave will run it in for his second rushing touchdown on the day. So we will see the extra point unit come out for the fifth time today. And if Dario Cerny executes this kick, which is expected, it will be 35 nothing going into the half. So mercy rule will apply for this game, most likely. Well, the only game they've scored more points than this was against Roxbury, a 42 to 35 win. So Wayne Hills has already hit their second highest point total of the season, and it's still the first half. And Dario Cerny, five for five on the day, doing a great job. Puts them, gives definitely, Dario Cerny definitely just gave the, Wayne Hills the edge right there. Mercy rules into effect, so now the second half, the clock will run no matter what, even if the ball goes out of bounds or incomplete. A change of possessions, they'll stop the clock, but Milburn obviously can score and change that, and then they'll have to go back to a conventional clock setup. But these are the kind of games we were used to seeing back in the day for Wayne Hills. In the mid to late 2000s, they had a lot of blowout games, a lot of 35 nothings at the half, a lot of 39-7 finals. So this is something that these fans are somewhat used to seeing, and it kind of brings back the memories of the old Wayne Hills days. Usually about two-thirds of the games went this way. And we see some new players getting in here. Jaron Hayek being one of them. Another one of the Hayek brothers scored the game-winning touchdown against Roxbury. Very good job. You see, you're telling me there's another one? There's another a third one. one. There's three of them. That's right. And he's, you know, he's right in between Hunter and Tyler. He does have some speed. He's right in between them in height. But he's only a sophomore, so he has time to grow and develop as a player and a person. And he's been having an outstanding season so far. Such a young player. And looking at the scoreboard, 35 to nothing, it'd be interesting to see what uh, Coach Demikoff does regarding players. Maybe with a, such a big lead, he puts in some younger players, try to get them some experience. 
And we see that'll be about, oh, a fumble on the kickoff, and that'll be recovered by Wayne Hills. So Wayne Hills will get the ball in their own 20 line with another chance to score with a minute and, thir and 22 seconds left in the half. Number nine, Chris Ruby. So that's a really good job right there by Chris Ruby, getting downfield quick. He's a quick player, force fumble, very physical kid. I've been hit by him a few times when we played football together. Hit hard. Not one of those people you want to see running at you. Well, there's the depth again. You have these special teamers who are rested, coming in, running full speed, and packing a punch. They're just waiting for their opportunity to get on the field. And then when they do, they're able to lay the hammer down as opposed to Milburn, who's running the same 15 to 18 guys out there on, in all three phases. So that starts to become a factor later in the games, and Wayne Hills gets the turnover because of it. Yeah, definitely. And we see some. Interesting call right there. Run play Luka Grave, but smart play by Wayne Demikoff. Wants to run down the clock for the half. Secure their 35 nothing lead, keep this a shutout. So I think that's a really smart play right there by Demikoff. Interesting call though, when you're that close to the end zone. Yeah, no reason to extend this game any longer than it has to be. They want to try and take this one down to the end of the half and not have to play any defense for the remainder of the half with a minute to play now. Maybe trying to set up Cerny for a chance at a field goal here. So three men in the backfield. Brendan Devera drops back for the pass, and Tyler Hayek wide open in the end zone, but slightly overthrown there by Brendan Devera. <laughs> Still taking shots, guys. Even with 50, with 40 seconds to go in the half, Devera loved those corner routes, and he went a little too far with Tyler there. You see, Wayne Hills had to make some adjustments today with Nick Petraco being out one of their starting players. He's make, been a difference maker so far this year. Very big physical tight end, weighing in at 215 of almost raw muscle. He's a very big, strong kid, but they've done a great job adjusting without him today. So Brendan Devera back to the throw again, and we'll let one go to Hunter Hayek, who will have a touchdown, extending their lead to 41-0, which can change if Dario Cerny does complete his sixth field goal of the day. Well, another good throw by Devera. Comfortable going over the middle, which we've seen a couple times. He's been really solid today. They have given him a chance to show what he can do with his arm, and he's come through today. Obviously, he has a lot of weapons he can go to, and he's been able to spread it around. Good throw there over the middle for another Wayne Hills touchdown. So Dario Cerny will put his sixth extra point through on the day. Very consistent field goal kicker. That is a rarity in high school football, but Wayne Hill is very lucky having a player like Dario out there. We see Dario repping the sleeve for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which just started up. Yeah, there's a few players that have some of that bright pink swagger, which you can notice pretty easily. So Wayne Hills will get the kick off for the seventh time today, forgetting, almost forgetting that they started with the kickoff. They kicked off the beginning of the half. And it has been a very impressive first half for the Patriots. What do you guys expect going forward in the second half of the game? What do you think the game plan is? Well, Aaron, I think that we'll definitely see Coach Demikoff subbing in some younger players, giving them some experience, giving the starters a break here. And we'll see a kickoff here by Bensi Polgar, who will send it deep again. And he's been doing a really good job today. And they will let that go into the end zone for a touchback. So 32 seconds left. Milburn with the ball on their own 20. Not much they could really do here except send a couple deep and hope for the best. Not to mention at halftime, we'll be greeted by a performance by the Wayne Hills cheerleaders and the Wayne Hills marching band who have put on an outstanding performance throughout the entire year, amping up the players, doing a great job. They're definitely discredited, I think. They do, they come out every game to give their support and definitely got to give them some credit and a shout out. It's a big part of the experience. Those kids are just as talented as the ones on the field. Definitely seem to energize both the players and also the fans and the bleachers. So we see Ravindranath back in the game. Seems to be okay, but we'll 
run for a gain of almost no yards, maybe one yard on the play for Milburn. And you see the clock will run down. And I think they will let the clock run the out till the, the end of the half. So score at the end of the half, 42-0. Wayne Hills Patriots up. And we'll have a halftime performance by the lovely cheerleaders and the Wayne Hills Band. That is the end of the first half.
hold for 50-50. The 50-50 drawing, I am told, will be done prior to the beginning of the third quarter. Cheerleaders. That was the Wayne Hills Marching Band and Cheerleading Squad. Another good performance from them. Wayne Hills leading 42-0 at the half. We'll step aside for a few minutes before the second half. And while we do, we'll play a great clip from the 30-minute drill, the sports talk show at Wayne Hills High School, back after a three-year hiatus. We'll toss it to Frankie Terranova, Alec Oppenheim, and Marouche Ademic talking NFL football. And then it'll be the second half between Wayne Hills and Milburn. Welcome to an abbreviated third episode of the 30 Minute Drill. Francesco Terranova alongside Marosha Demick and Alec Oppenheim. And today, we will be talking about what we learned in the NFL in week three and who are the players and games to watch in week four. So the first guy we're going to be talking about is Le'Veon Bell, one of the best rushers in the league, always has that power threat. 
So, Maroj, what are your thoughts on Le'Veon Bell? What do you think he could do for the Steelers coming back off the suspension? Uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell has the power to make the Steelers a real dual threat, not with offense and defense, but a dual threat on offense. You have uh, Big Ben obviously real comfortable in the pocket there with um, Antonio Brown, obviously one of the best receivers in the NFL, had a monster week last week. Le'Veon Bell with uh, power running ability, it's just you see it all the time, typical fundamental football, you know, run, 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 pound the ball in, get the defense to close in, and right as the, right as the secondary uh, you know, collapses in, you uh, free up a uh, gridiron for uh, monster passes here. So, I mean, the Steelers, they have all the tools to for a Super Bowl caliber offense, and Le'Veon Bell is certainly going to be a valuable tool going down the road in the NFL season. Yeah, one of the biggest issues with Le'Veon Bell was his suspension and off-the-field antics, as he only played six games because of an ACL injury and his suspension. But... Uh, Le'Veon Bell did make a statement that he looks to be less of a distraction to the organization. So moving on to Jordan Hayward, uh, Howard, the new back for the Chicago Bears, straight out of Indiana, the fifth round draft pick. Alec, what are your thoughts on Jordan Howard? Well, uh, as we said, Jordan Howard is now the starter there because of an injury um, from uh, what? Um, what's his name? Uh, Jordan Howard. Indiana. No, what, who's the starter? Um, Jeremy Langford. He's oh yeah, yeah, he's he out got for four injured. to six yes, weeks yes, now. Yes, yes. And uh, Jordan Howard is now the starter. I think he can put up some good numbers. Jeremy Langford, uh, he's a threat. He, uh, he had Jordan Howard last week he had nine attempts for 45 yards, but no touchdowns. And um, I think he could also uh, be a big part in the pass attack, um, alongside with uh, Alshon Jeffrey. He's a good rusher too. Yeah, definitely. Jordan Howard has been seeing more carries each week averaging around 40 yards for this season straight out of Alabama like I said the fifth round draft pick definitely a lot of high hopes for the Bears with Jay Cutler uh, really not doing what he's paid to do in that Bears organization so moving on to Terrell Pryor the really all-around athlete for the Cleveland Browns Marosh what are your thoughts on the player of Terrell Pryor uh, you know Terrell Pryor I feel like he could be primed to have a big number year coming up with uh, the injury to Crawford I think their rookie out with a hand injury and uh, you know the Browns always having their woes at quarterback similar to the Jets minus Ryan Fitzpatrick with uh, Robert Griffin III going down earlier in the season so you know it's always shaky in the quarterback spot for the Browns so you can't expect prior to be getting picture perfect balls thrown at him week in week out but um you know, like I said, Pryor's going to get uh, more touches now that there's a slot in the wide receiver area freed up. And uh, hopefully he can turn it into some receptions, some yards, and maybe some touchdowns. Yeah, we talked a little bit about the Cleveland, quarter, uh, the Cleveland Browns quarterback situation. If you noticed on that graphic, he had 21 yards on four attempts with a touchdown. And he also, not only quarterback and wide receiver, he even stepped in as a safety. Definitely a really mobile player for the Cleveland Browns. You don't really see a lot of that, especially on both sides of the ball. What a great player in Terrell Pryor. So to finish off our fantasy segment, we have Orleans Darkwa, a power back for the Giants. And with both Shane Vereen and Rashad Jennings being out, Alec, what do you see from Orleans Darkwa for I think or next week? Sorry. Orleans Darkwa is not your typical running back. I mean... More guys like Le'Veon Bell, they, they're quick. he's quick, he's fast, he can, re he can receive. Orleans Darkwell, though, he's a big back. He can get those tough yards when you need them. Like third and three, he can get three yards, get you, give you the first down. Um, he's not really a good receiver, but, like, but uh, he's their only option with Shane Vereen out for most of the year, if not all of the year, and um, Rashad Jennings with a toe injury. So uh, they're going to have to rely on him heavily. Yeah, the injured backs of the Giants has become key for the Giants' offense, uh, but he should be seeing a lot bigger workload, especially around the goal line and big third down plays uh, for the strong powered off offense uh, the, the New York Giants. Uh, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we will go over last week's games and highlight some of our favorites.
Welcome back to the 30 Minute Drill. Some important games happened this week, including the Giants and Redskins, an NFC East matchup where there was a really close games, but then there were also some blowouts, real surprising blowouts in the Eagles and Steelers. If we could see that graphic, a lot of great games happened this week. So, Marosh, to start off, what were your thoughts on the Giants and Redskins game? Uh, you know, I think myself as well as a lot of people here around the tri-state area watch the nfl we're expecting a giants victory here but um really the redskins caught a lot of people off guard sneaking out a 29 27 win sean jackson with deshaun rather five receptions 96 yards and a touchdown really um surprising here to see the giants drop when you saw you'd think a lot of their problems were answered last year dropping four or five close games in the fourth quarter uh, the Giants coming out weeks one and two and grabbing really solid victories, assuring wins. And you see that uh, fourth quarter monster plaguing the Giants again, so hopefully they can work past it and uh, get on to a more productive end of the season. Yeah, it seemed like nothing was going right for the New York Giants uh, in that game. Definitely just saw Jackson burn them and a guy like Kirk Cousins who caused a lot of bad chemistry between him and the team uh, really stepped up for them. So moving on to the Vikings and Panthers. Vikings coming out of this game 3-0, and beating the uh, NFC champs. Alec, what are your thoughts on this game? If we could see that graphic. Um, the Vikings just outplayed the Panthers. The Kyle Rudolph has had a great game, and, Sam, and uh, with Teddy Bridgewater out, no one was really expecting much from them. Uh, Sam Bradford has done a really good job as uh, the replacement. and uh, Fantastic pickup by the Eagles, by the way. For Carson Wentz and draft picks, absolutely well done. Yeah, it was, they got a first rounder and a fourth rounder for him. So, yeah, it was a good job by the Eagles, too. But, um, uh, yeah, it was a lot. People thought it, the Panthers would win in a close game, but it actually wasn't a close game. Um, they won by over 10 points. Um, that's not what you're expecting from, the, t from the, the NFC champions. They're supposed to have a really good defense. Their offense is supposed to be very and it just wasn't. They didn't show up for that game. Yeah, the Panthers also give them some respect because they have had a very tough schedule versing the Super Bowl defending champs, uh, getting that win last <coughs> week, but now they're versing the 3-0 and Vikings, one of the last undefeated teams in the NFL. Um, going on to yet another game, if we can see that Week 3 graphic one more time, uh, the Bengals and Broncos, the Super Bowl defending champs, and Trevor Simeon coming in really clutch for the Denver Broncos, getting them a 3-0 and start. Marosh, what are your thoughts on that game? Uh, you know, like you said, Simeon coming up really big. You didn't really see him projected to be the starter coming out of Denver training camp at the start of the NFL season. Uh, four touchdown game, I mean, that doesn't happen every Sunday. So you got to be thankful for young talent coming in clutch. You obviously can't count on it every single week, week in, week out. So you got to make sure, Denver's got to make sure they uh, keep the opposing points down on the board and uh, really buckle down and don't expect greatness, but expect quality from their quarterbacks. Yeah, you John. Gotta, yeah, can't get cocky. Yeah, John Elway talked to Trevor Simeon uh, and told him to just do what you do. Don't overthink it, and just do what you can on the field. Which it looks like Trevor Simeon was really taking a heart as he did have, like you said, the four touchdown game last week. A really great job getting the Broncos Super Bowl defending champs to the three and zero start that they were probably expecting with the defense that they do have in Von Miller. Um, so going on to probably the biggest surprise of week three, the Steelers and Eagles game, uh, a 34 to three route by the Eagles led by Carson Wentz. If we could see that graphic one more time of week three, um, hopefully nothing. I don't think anyone was expecting. What are your thoughts, Alec? I mean, 34 to three against this great Steelers offense. I'm surprised that the, that the Eagles defense could stop that offense to, to just three points. I mean, Antonio Brown, he had a good game. Um, but uh, D'Angelo Williams, he didn't do much. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, he couldn't really hit anyone else except for Brown. And um, their defense just it was overpowered by that Eagles offense with uh, Carson Wentz. He had a very good game. Jordan Matthews was good once again. And, um, yeah, it's just there wasn't enough. They couldn't do anything. Yeah, the Eagles could make a strong run for the NFC East division, but that graphic definitely doesn't for the running backs of the Eagles as they combined for three touchdowns, led by Darren Sproles, over 100 rushing yards and a touchdown. Really a g great game all around by the Eagles, something that they could boost into the uh, next couple of weeks. So that's all from this week's 30-minute drill. I'm Francesco Terranova alongside Marie and Alec Oppenheim. Come back next week to see our first early predictions of the NF NFL playoffs and go over the start of the MLB postseason. Welcome back to Patriot Stadium here in Wayne, New Jersey. Wayne Hills leading Milburn 42-0 here at the half. 
John Vitas alongside Brandon Brogan and Matthew Klarberg. Guys, thorough domination from the Patriots in the first half. Their first four games of the season all decided by 11 points or less. Different story here today. 42 zip in favor of the home team. How about the quarterback, Brendan Devera? Four touchdowns in the first half. Two passing, two rushing. Luca Grave, two rushing touchdowns as well. Wayne Hill's offense clicking, and they'll look to get this one over with quickly here in the second half. It'll be a running clock. Patriots up 42 0 as we bring in Matthew Clarberg, who wasn't with us in the first half. Matthew, you were down on the field. What were some of your impressions of this Wayne Hills team? I think that the way that the Wayne Hills team is playing is every part of their game right now, whether it's offense or defense, they're doing a great job at it. They're getting open routes, and De Brennan Devera is hitting them. With four touchdowns on the day, he's doing a great job. And this is the type of game that they need to go momentum to go into the playoffs. And you know, Matthew, I would definitely agree. I mean, as you said, offense and defense both doing a great job, and the scoreboard proves that. 42 points scored in the first half of the offense and zero points led up by the defense. So as we have here, kickoff, we'll begin the second half. This is Bensi Polgar, the large kicker. He is a def he's a defensive lineman, an offensive lineman, listed at an even 300 pounds and putting all of it behind that kickoff, which will be fielded at the 12 for Milburn, who works from right to left in the white uniforms. Trying to get it to the far side as a flag flies. Getting across the 20 are the Millers. We'll see what the penalty is as Wayne Hill's defense breaks the huddle. A shutout pitched in the first half for this Wayne Hill's defense, and they'll look to keep the Millers off the board here in the second half as we take a look at the early penalty. And it is going to be a hold on Milburn, so that'll back them up inside their own 15, maybe all the way back to the 10-yard line for Milburn, so they'll be backed up pretty deep into their own end here. Different rules here in the second half, guys. We're going to have a running clock. They only stop it for scores, injuries, timeouts, and penalties. So even in completions, they will run the clock, and so this game will move quickly here in the second half. And, you know, I see some new players on the field. Number 70, Connor Tarpey, only a sophomore. Very big kid, squatting over 300 pounds as a sophomore. He's doing really well so far in this season for JV as well. Michael Krawchuk in the middle, playing nose guard. And Pete Delachai on the outside. Oh, sorry, Gabe Delachai, Pete's brother, playing defensive line today. So we see a mix-up on the defense. We're going to see a lot of fresh faces here in the second half. Some of the second teamers will get their opportunity against the Milburn team winless on the year. Hand off up the middle on the first play from Milburn. And a nice gain going right up the middle. Gain of maybe seven for Milburn. And you know, that's what I said right there again. Number 70, Connor Tarpey doing a really good job out there. using Being very physical kid, using his size. And making good tackles, good plays right there up now, the middle. And we're going to leave you guys a little bit here in the second half to let everybody know who's out there on the field. We'll get some of the underclassmen in here. Some of the second teamers with an opportunity to get their name heard over the loudspeaker. So... Jump in, throw the names out there. We're going to see a lot of different Wayne Hills Patriots on the field here in the second half. They fake the sweep. They go up the middle and a good stop. Patriots stop Milburn for no gain. That was the starters to shank Riven Drenneth for the Millers who left for a couple of drives because of an injury, but that leg appears to be okay back in here in the second half. And you see they're moving some players around as well, not just subbing players, but Jason Modak getting his chance of playing linebacker. Aaron Hayek is getting in, playing his chance at linebacker. Also, Chris Ruby, who's playing a lot of offense, not so much defense, getting his chance to play linebacker. So those are three very physical big kids playing linebacker for the Wayne Hills Patriots right now. So we'll see some guys shifting around. We'll probably see some of these guys playing both ways. So Looks like Danny Rodriguez is in the game as well for Wayne Hills. Here's a throw to the left. And it's snuffed out by the Wayne Hills secondary. A couple guys getting their helmets in there. That was number three, Tanner Partol on the reception, a junior for Milburn. And a bit of a mix up there. Not Jason Modak playing linebacker, but Rodriguez doing a great job there getting across the field to make a play. I do have to say that for Wayne Hills, this is a good opportunity in this blowout basically of the game, 42 nothing, for them to put in the sophomores, the younger kids, to see what it's like in this type of competition playing against a varsity level team. And a few other fresh faces. We see Joe Jump out there and Zach Zachman in the Zach corner. Zachman got his nose dirty on that play. Well covered by the secondary. They run the jet sweep this time to the outside, and it's absolutely blown up. Good play by Chris Ruby making an impact in the backfield. That's a loss of six 
thanks to the good effort from Ruby. And you know, as I said, Ruby, definitely an impact player, hits very hard, very physical kid. I've played with him a few times, hits very hard, not one of those kids you want to see rushing at you in the backfield. And was able to trip up number three for Milburn. That would be Tanner Portal. So this time the Millers are going to spread it out wide. Two receivers to side. As again, the clock will run on every play. Already down to eight minutes here in the third quarter. Patriots up by six touchdowns. And we also see sophomore Adam Abita getting his chance to play corner. There's a pass to the right. And it's complete to Will Twamby, a gain of maybe two. And it's going to be third and very long for Peter Ceruto, the junior quarterback for the Miller. And a good stop right there by number 16, Nick Azapardi, sophomore. Very good. He does well in a few sports. He's also a lacrosse player, started varsity as a freshman, doing well out here on the football field, as we can see so far today, making a good stop on that play. And because the Patriots haven't had any blowout games, this is the first opportunity for a lot of these guys to get out there from the sidelines they are obviously playing JV football, so they're getting their reps, but a chance to get out here on the varsity field and, and understand that they can play at this level too. In the shotgun, Ceruto, a couple of different calls from him. And give it inside, nothing doing. Snuffed out by the Wayne Hills defensive line. Looked right like number 67, Danny Rodriguez, in on that tackle, as well as Mike Krawchuk and an injury. It looks like it's Ravindranath again down for Milburn. And to attend to him as we've already chewed up five minutes here in the third quarter. Wayne Hill's yet to get the football, but they will momentarily. It's going to be a fourth and 12 for Milburn after they tend to the injury. A good start here for Wayne Hill starting the second half. All the younger players are doing a great job jumping routes and getting able to get stop the ball. And Milburn has not been able to get the ball very far so far. They had that 10-yard penalty, and now they're only about eight yards up from where they started. And yeah, I have to agree with you. You see the younger players and some new players getting their chance out there. Michael Krawcheck and Connor Tarpey, two names we've been talking about so far in the second half, doing a great job on defense, making sure the ball is getting too far past the line of scrimmage. So, so far they're fourth and 12, so they've been really doing a really well job. Also, Chris Ruby getting the backfield, making a big play. So not only has the Wayne Hill starters been doing a good job, but their secondary is putting up a really good stand as well, which is something you like to see, give their starters a break. Looks like Ravin Dranith will get off the field under his own effort here, so hopefully he okay is... They set up for the punt play again. Drew Pickard, the receiver, also punting for Milburn. One thing we've noticed over the years, as soon as Wayne Hills goes to the bench and they get the second team in there, not a whole lot of talent is lost. The backups understand the system just as well as the starters. As this one is popped short punt. That's going to be a, about an 18-yard punt there from Pickard. And so Wayne Hills will start their first second-half possession in plus territory. But usually in these blowout games, we've seen it over the past 20 years for Wayne Hills, a lot of 42 nothing scores over the years. And the second teamers are always at least able to play the other team to a draw in the second half. It's not often that they're taken advantage of by the other team's varsity starters. So just another testament to the Wayne Hills program that a lot of these backups can play to at least an even score with the other team's starters. And we do see the second team in on offense as well. Hand off to Right side and some running room for number 29, Joe Mangelli, who gets all the way inside the 10-yard line. Great run from Mangelli on his first opportunity of the day. Mangelli, who is a very athletic player, he also plays baseball. He can run, I'm pretty sure, about a 4 2 40. The kid just can find the route and get through. He's kind of like a younger Luca Gravi, who just finds a hole and keeps going. It's hard to stop him once he's got full head of steam. Only five foot six for Mangelli. Unfortunately, that call is going to come back. They called a holding penalty on Wayne Hills. They actually do gain one yard on the play, so the holding came bit downfield. And so it'll be first and nine from the Milburn 33. So a few other new faces we're seeing here. J.P. Lemchek, the quarterback playing right now, number 15, sophomore. He's done really well so far. He did really well for his freshman year, led the freshman team to be 9-0. and Tyler Rivera, number 24, playing wide receiver. He got a couple reps in a couple weeks ago. And Nia Puntalolo playing fullback. Lemchek hands it off. Here's Mangeli again. This time he's met by the Milburn defensive line. Picks up four on the play. Gets inside the Miller's 30-yard line. So that's his first official carry. Gets 
about four yards, and they do have a man down due to the Miller, so another injury, and the clock will stop again with 5.01 to play here in the third quarter. But Lemchek at six foot three is only a sophomore. You said led his team to an undefeated record last year at the freshman level. Maybe the future of this Wayne Hills offense, a lot of seniors on the Wayne Hills starting offense, pretty much all the skill players who have touched the ball are seniors. Rivera, Grave, both Hayex and Njoku, all seniors. So it'll be a fresh bunch next year for Wayne Hills. And Lemchek as just a sophomore this year would be a junior next year. Might be the future leader of this team. So it's always good to give him opportunities in a game like this. Yet another good reason why it's very good for these young players to get in and have an opportunity to play and see what it's like at the varsity level because like John was saying, the seniors are leaving and they're going to have to take over next year. So it's good to know what they have to be up to. Yeah, and you see one of the leaders that's been leading this young offense that has been brought in during the second half, Jaron Hayek, has been getting a lot of the calls out there from the coaches, been putting, pushing players to do well right now, some of the younger players who aren't quite sure what to do, and he's definitely being a leader so far right there. So the Miller's defensive lineman still shaking up as a couple of different trainers attending to him. As you see the Milburn team on a knee for their fallen friend, but just trying to project this team moving forward, there's a lot of talent to lose in one year. And the varsity experience is something that you really can't put a price tag on because if you come out week one next year as a starter who never saw the field, things move very quickly at the varsity level. You've Something you've been aspiring to your whole football career to finally get on a varsity. And so if you take the field for the first time in week one as a starter and have no varsity experience, things can move very quickly around. You can kind of get lost in the shuffle and, and not perform at your highest level. So to be able to get in to games in previous years, games like today, and get that experience, get the speed of the game, get to you against a lesser opponent, and have that confidence to know that you can play at this level, that is so valuable moving forward. And so for a lot of these kids, they're on the second team now, but they'll be starters next year and even further down the road. So this is experience that you really, you really can't put a price tag on if you're Wayne Hill. As you see both teams now heading back to their respective sidelines as they continue to attend to the injured player. Well, talking about these underclassmen getting in, players like Jaron Hayek and Bensie Polgar are players who get in constantly every game. Bensie's the starting kick, kick off, um, kicker, and then he gets in also on defense. Jaron is a receiver who also had the win touchdown against Roxbury. So players like that next year will be huge and key players to have for the Wayne Hills offense. And you know, not only that, Matt, but also Coach Demikoff does a really good job at adjusting new players into this program. He does a really good job, makes sure they're comfortable where they are, makes sure they're comfortable in their position. That way they can perform better and be more confident in their position. Player for Milburn was number 53, Sam Gladson, a junior defensive lineman. And he was able to get off the field on his own power so that's always good news as Lemchek runs the offense another give to Mangeli who finds some space up the middle and able to fall forward for Wayne Hill's first down pushing the pile to about the 22 yard line it'll be a first and 10 from the Patriots there so it looks like Mangeli going to get the early touches here for the second teamers as See a couple of guys into the game. Hunter Goldberg, the wide receiver here on the near side. We see Tyler trying to cost a senior getting some reps in. Tyler also tight started end. today. I'm oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Brandon, but uh, Tyler also started today, so it's good to get him in there now. Dropping back to pass as Lemchek winds up and fires one towards the sideline. A diving effort from the tight end over there. Trenacosta, the intended receiver. And Lemchek able to get a pass off there but a little overthrown towards the sideline and an incompletion so second and ten for Wayne Hills again the clock will run even after an incompletion down to three minutes and 35 seconds here in the third quarter and you know an impressive job to Tyler Trenacosta that usually doesn't get in too much but the new center today Scott Fishgrun had to play and the tight end the usual starting tight end Nick Petraco was out so Tyler Trenacosta had to step in big today and did a really good job he was announced as a starter for Wayne Hills today and now getting a chance to run some routes after primarily blocking in the first half. Let me check that give. Here's Mangeli. Left side has plenty of room. Headed for that far pylon, and he gets in. That is a touchdown for Joe Mangeli, the sophomore tailback. Extends the Wayne Hills lead to 48-0. 
And you know, that's a really good job right there blocking for the Wayne Hills Patriots. So Jaron Hayek downfield, really great block. Jumanjali might not have even gotten into the end zone for that. Connor Tarpey extending, doing a really good job blocking. And everyone on the left side just doing an outstanding job right there. That was Mangelli's first varsity career touchdown. So good. At, now it's good for him to get the jitters out. So next year when he comes out starting, he won't have that jitters and the feeling that he's nervous. Lining up the extra point is Sierney. He's good again. Make it seven for seven for Dario Sierney today. And Wayne Hill's now a 49-0 lead. Mangelli with eight carries coming into today. Six of them came against Powelke in Florida that Wayne Hills lost. So only two carries over the last three weeks for Mangelli, but getting the opportunity in a blowout here today and so far running very well. I have to say that field goal by Cerny, I'm pretty sure that made it his career high of seven field goals in one game. His po uh, previous was six against Roxbury and is a good thing for him getting seven for seven in one game. He's an outstanding kicker. Well, this is now the highest scoring game of the year for Wayne Hills. They beat Roxbury 42 to 35 on the road. That was their previous high in points and already close to half a century. And we're still here in the third quarter, 3.03 to play. And Milburn will get the ball. And we'll see some new players getting in here on the kickoff. Danny Rodriguez, Anthony Cuso will be in, Jaron Hayek and Hunter Goldberg on the right side. And I see some fresh, some older faces as well. Anthony Puntalolo, Jojo Mangelli, and Chris Ruby. That's a bouncing kick towards the 15. Bobbled there from Milburn and then gang tackled by Wayne Hills across the 20 yard line. And that's where the Millers will begin the drive. Peter Ruby in the gun for Milburn, trying to get on the scoreboard here against Wayne Hills' second team defense. It looked like on that play, number 67, Danny Rodriguez was in on the tackle. He's a senior. It's good for him to get in and get reps. He does not usually get in in the game. So Ceruto getting the signs for Milburn, trying to get something going offensively. Not much in terms of yardage in the first half at all for Milburn. Wayne Hills controlled this game in all aspects. Only a few first downs at most for Milburn. We see Mike Krawchuk in at nose tackle, weighing in at 265 pounds, so a very large player. There's the give to number 26. That's Patrick Fitzsimmons, a junior running back for Milburn. Looks at that five foot. So you have a 5-7 tailback for Milburn and a 5-6 tailback for Wayne Hills in the game right now. Another good adjustment by the senior Tyler trying to cost them making a good play right there, making sure it was a minimal game. And we see another fresh face, Louis Degatti, playing cornerback for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Number 10 here on the near side. Ceruto again gives the sweep to the left side and in on the tackle for Hills, Hunter Goldberg. Another player, Louis Degatti, who's also, I believe, around five foot five. So I'm pretty sure he's the shortest player on the field right now. And it's really good for him in getting get reps. He also runs a very fa fast 40 yard dash. He'll be a good impact player next year for the Hills offense. Well, you know, you talk about his height, only five foot five, but what he doesn't have in height, he definitely makes up for in strength. One of the strongest sophomores on the team. His dad is a personal trainer, does a really good job at that. Lifts all the time and is a very disciplined player. So third and three here for Milburn from their own nine trying to get a drive going here. Ceruto in the shotgun will throw to the left side and he's met. Big time hit from Wayne Hills. Look like number 28 Zach Zachman coming in to blow it up and Milburn will have to punt. Well, looks like they're going to run the offense again on fourth down. Fourth and two they give a gain of one on the play so fourth and two from the 30. Ceruto and the Miller is going to go for it here deep in their own end as the play comes in from the sideline. And actually, they'll call a fourth and a long one for Milburn, and they need this. Ceruto again up the middle, and nothing doing. The Wayne Hills defense answers the call. We'll see where they spot it. And it looks like the Millers are going to get a favorable spot. They're going to give them the first down. 
So some favors done for the Millers there. Looked like they may have been a little bit short, but they're gonna give them the first down. And they'll flip the field. That's the end of the third quarter. Again, we're moving very quickly here with a running clock. So it looks like Milburn does have their first first down in the second half. And they'll have the ball at about the 32 on the other side when we start the fourth quarter. But good chance to see some of the younger guys here today. I know these are some players that you guys are more familiar with than me. So what have you seen so far from this Wayne Hill second team defense? Well, I mean, I definitely saw a really good job right there by Zach Mack, sorry, Zach Zachman. He also is a lacrosse player, not usually too aggressive, but he definitely stuck it to the offense right there, hit the kid very hard, made sure he didn't want to get up from that one. Also, Anthony Puntalillo, another player, he very hard hitters playing fullback for the offense. He did a very good job too. I'm pretty sure he had the block that injured that one player. Never a good thing to see injured players, but I like to see the aggressiveness. Zach is also a familiar face on the field. He's usually the kick holder for Dario Cerny. So he gets in on defense now, and he's also on the kick kickoff. Bill will lead the offense back to the field for Milburn. First and 10 from their own 32. They continue to run with four receivers. They've stuck with this formation for the majority of the game with Ceruto in the pistol and then two receivers to either side. Man goes in motion, and they give it up the middle it? this time, and a gain of three or so for the running back that was Fitzsimmons again. It looks like a new face again on the field. Number 17, Ryan Soto, who's a sophomore. Another good player to get and get some work. So the young player is definitely putting up a stand here, not letting Milburn do much on the field. That third quarter did a very good job. Milburn did not score any points. So I'd like to see it, the young players keep it up out there. Yeah, you got to figure they're pretty fresh. They most likely had a JV game to play earlier in the week, but obviously with the adrenaline going today, getting a chance to play on the varsity field, very good for all these kids. Second and seven, Ceruto is going to keep it. And no gain on that play. Looked like a little read option. May have actually been the backup quarterback. It looks like it's... Number 10 now into the game. That is Evan Molka, the sophomore quarterback, foot 10. So the junior starter, Ceruto, appears to be done, and Milburn will rest up for future games, and they're going to give the sophomore Molka a chance to run the offense. We'll give him one yard, third and six from the 36 for Milburn. The team still looking for their first win of the year. 0-3, a season-high 10 points last week at Caldwell. Their first four games all on the road. They will finally get a chance to play at home next week as they get a false start penalty here on the offense. But Milburn outscored by a combined 111-24 in their first three games of the year, and that differential will only increase after this game. And so one of those teams just trying to build the program and Try and get some positive results as the season goes along. It'll be a third and 11 now for Molka and the Millers. So another new player we see for the Wayne Hills Patriots, number 30, Zach Miller. Molka back to pass. May have had it tipped as it's fluttering in the air and intercepted. Across the 40 comes Zachman now at the 35. Able to shake a defender and get the near sideline. Zachman pushed out of bounds at the 25. As the Patriots get the turnover, second pick of the day for Wayne Hills. And Zachman, it looks like, on the interception. See Zachman out there, great pick, shook up some defenders, seemed to literally break someone's ankles out there, get a player down, and took it out of bounds. Another injury on the field, and I, I think right now the reason for these injuries is because of the cold right now in the air. So getting hit, getting and getting hit hard especially, is very difficult for a football player right now. And Wayne Hill's always packing a little extra punk punch. Again, we mentioned the depth. Everybody fresh, everybody hitting hard, especially on special teams and broken plays like that. You can see some big hits down the field on those interception plays, the returner coming across the field. But it looks like the injured player will be all right. Number 70, Joe Petrilli coming up slow there for Milburn. And Wayne Hills will have the ball in plus three again at the Milburn 24 yard line to start the drive after the interception from Mr. Zachman. So more new faces out there. Number 23 for Wayne Hills, Austin Minogue, 
very big player, very strong kid. And also number 20, Mark Laterzo, a junior. Both of them start on the JV team. Really good for them to get in because next year they may have a shot at playing and even starting. So good for them to get that experience right now. Yeah, you talk about Mark Laterzo had an older brother graduate a few years ago. Rob Laterzo is also a very good football player. Let's see if Mark can do anything out here. He's playing corner. Oh, sorry, receiver for the Wayne Hills Patriots offense. So Lemchak will field again for Wayne Hills. Again, a 6'3 sophomore and a promising player moving forward. It looks like Milburn's going to take a time out here with 8.58 remaining in the game. Well, this was a game that was very one-sided early. We saw a lot of strong play from the starting Wayne Hills offense. The starter, Brennan Devera today, four touchdowns, two rushing and two passing. Luca Grave, very solid on the ground, a couple of touchdowns for him. And the one thing that stood out about Devera's performance, able to spread the wealth amongst all his receivers. He also ran the ball effectively, two rushing touchdowns. Hunter Hayek, a touchdown. Evidence Najoku, a deep receiving touchdown. Three catches today for him, and he's a guy who Wayne Hills looks to get going. What did you guys see today from the starting unit? Because it looked like they were clicking on all cylinders today after some really competitive games earlier in the year. Well, you know, I think a variety of play calling really helped the Wayne Hills Patriots today between passing and running. You saw, uh, I believe, two rushing touchdowns from Brendan Devero, the quarterback, two from the running back, and then two passing touchdowns. So very equally spread out. So Devera now in his last three games, 10 touchdowns all through the air, not to mention the two rushing touchdowns. Here is a run up the middle. Looked like they brought in Aaron Hayek there to carry the ball. So all three Hayek brothers touching the ball in this game, and Jaron, the younger brother, getting some run here. And also another new, oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Matt. Another new face on the field is number 88, Antonio Cofrancesco, who is also another JV player, and good for him to get in now because next year he will also have a good shot at playing. And also number 37, Nick Al Sheamus, playing fullback. And he's been doing really well so far this season for JV. Let's hope that he could show some numbers for varsity and do a good job right now. So Jaron Hayek now in the gun for Wayne Hills. will give it this time to Mangelio as space. Inside the 10, heading towards the near sideline, will be knocked down at the 7-yard line. Or excuse me, that's number 23, Austin Minogue. Yeah, Austin is a junior, and I believe that is his first carry of the season for Varsity, and a good carry, gaining about 15, 20 yards. So good job by him to find the hole and keep going. He's a very strong player. He's one of the he lists one of some of the most on the as a junior, and he's doing a great job this year for JV also. And you see they mixed up the line, the Wayne Hills Patriots, who is also doing a very good job. Danny Rodriguez playing left guard, Connor Tarpey playing left tackle. Keeping Scott Fish going at center, I think that's a good move because if you find a center, it could do both things. And good job by Jaron Hayek scoring a touchdown right there. So there's another touchdown for Wayne Hills. Jaron Hayek off of left tackle, able to run it in for a touchdown. His brother Hunter earlier in the game with a receiving touchdown. Jaron gets the running touchdown here. Just a sophomore getting to run the offense here. Great blocking up front by the left side of the offensive line who identified Brandon. 55 nothing Wayne Hills and on for the extra point is Searney and it is good 56 nothing Patriots again their highest offensive output of the year and the second team getting it done just as well as the start well talking about number 11 Jaron Hayek who had the carry for the touchdown on that play his brothers are two of the key players in this Wayne Hills offense so now it's good for him to get his moment and shine and show his brothers what he could do and next year he'll be a starting either receiver or running back, and he'll do a great job for Wayne Hills. I'm sure Jaron took his backyard with those big older brothers bullying him around, and now a chance to do his damage on the varsity field. Got to feel good for the little guy to get in there and not only score, but run the offense for Wayne Hills. We got to see a couple different quarterbacks, Lemchek, and now the fourth quarter going to Jaron Hayek. So a lot of guys fighting for next year. We saw a good run there from... Minigu again, as well as Mangeli, those guys will be competing for the starting job next year. So, a lot of things to look forward to for Wayne Hills. Bensi Pulgar for the kickoff, fielded at the 14, coming to the near side here. Matt Sullivan, number eight, on the return 
for Milburn. 7.05 to play here in the week five contest for the Patriot. Good tackle there on the play by Chris Ruby, who has been getting in a lot this game on defense. And as I'm looking right now on the field, number 64, Frank DeCosmo is getting in. He's a sophomore, so he'll get a shot on a defensive line here. And Frank is very well known throughout the football team, has a nickname, they even call him Frank the Tank. So hopefully he'll make a couple big stops, excite the team here. Well, Frank the Tank is ready to go at nose guard right now as the Millers will break the huddle as the clock continues to run. No rush for either side here. 56 nothing. Wayne Hills would easily, by a, by a long shot, be their largest win of the year. Their biggest win to this point, only seven points. They won the last three games all by that exact total. So good to get an easy one in this week. Here's the handoff up the middle. That is number 26, Patrick Fitzsimmons again, the junior running back for Milburn. I also see another few new field, Paris Patricis, who's a sophomore. And also Christian McCall, a sophomore, number 66. So two players who have been doing well for the so sophomore and JV team, and they'll be able to get in now for varsity. So it'll, Sorry about that. It'll be a second and nine here for Milburn. Own 28-yard line. Clock ticking down to five and a half to play with the backup quarterback in there for the Millers. It's Evan Mulka, number 10. Sends a man in motion, it's Jimmy Linehan, and they give Linehan the ball, and he's gang tackled by a few different Wayne Hills Patriots. Luis, Luis Degatti getting in there with a couple other guys. And you know, one of the things I wanted to mention, Matt Carver just mentioned a new face, Christian McCall, he's a very aggressive kid, definitely likes to get in on the tackles and wants to be a big part of the defense. So third and long coming here for Milburn. We'll call it a third and eight from their own 29. Taking their time, breaking the huddle again. I have to say, a good job there done by the Wayne Hills defense on jumping the route and seeing what the Millers of Milburn are trying to do. And they did a good job getting a stop for a short gain. Getting off the field late there for Wayne Hills is Mangeli. Four receivers set again and a penalty, or a timeout rather. The Millers will call timeout third and eight as we take a peek at the Wayne Hills upcoming schedule. They'll be at Pascag Valley on Friday. That'll be a tough game. The Indians always a tough team. And then they'll play the other PV after that. They'll have a bye week in between. So Pascag Valley on the road next week, then a bye week followed by Passaic Valley on October 21st. So the competition expected to obviously go up a notch from this week. And as the Patriots get into the second half of the of the regular season schedule, guys, how do you expect the competition to break down moving forward? Well, I feel that with the upcoming schedule from Pascac Valley to Passaic Valley, and I believe after that is Wayne Valley, who is undefeated right now, it will be hard, much harder games than a game like this. I think we'll see more games like we saw in Rocks, against Roxbury and games like that we saw against Ramapo. Very high tent and very strong playing by the Wayne Hills offense and the defense. And another new face that is very interesting that I like to see out there is Evident Njoku's younger brother, Charles Njoku, playing safety. So Charles in there playing all the way to the right of the screen. And as Wayne Hills kind of getting more defensive backs in there with a four receiver set on third and long, just a 4-3 this time. Or really three down linemen as a man goes in motion again for Milburn. Set to throw is Molka. Throws it down the field incomplete. Good defense there from number 10. Lewis Gotti defending the receiver and it'll be fourth down now for Milburn. We'll see if they punt or if they let the sophomore quarterback air it out again. Looks like they're going to punt. And you know something interesting I saw there. As you were talking about earlier, Matt, Louis Degatti only standing at 5'5", five, five, Drew Pickard at 6'3". So that is a very good play by Louis Degatti, making sure he got up there to stop that pass from being complete. Oh, so now for the punt, I'm seeing number 22, Luca Grave, number 18, Hunter Hay getting back in. Both starters who scored on the, on the day today. So they'll get back in for some reps, get loose. So the usual special teams unit still out there for the Patriots as Pickard gets set to punt it away again. First couple today were very strong. Diminishing results after that. It's about his fifth or sixth punt of the day as the Millers letting the clock run. So you know how they feel about this one. Three minutes 
and 20 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And now another whistle, looks like another timeout. That's their third and final timeout. 17 to go, trying to get on the same page. And Wayne Hill's trying to let this one get down to triple zeros as they lead it 56 nothing and playing Pascac Valley, Passaic Valley next week. This has got to be one of those games where you can kind of recharge the batteries, get everybody rested. Obviously, nobody played half of football today. And with a full week to rest before the PV game and then two weeks to rest after that, this should be a Wayne Hills team that is rested and ready for the postseason. They figure to be a big factor in Group 4. I think right now Wayne Hills, after last year, going into the playoffs, they want to go in strong and get that spot to get back to the state championship. And their goal right now is to win it after last year's loss against Ultapan. They were able to avenge that loss last week, beating Ultapan 34-27. to Wayne Hills undefeated in the state of New Jersey this year. They're 3-0. Their only loss came down in Florida. They took on Pajo Key down in the Sunshine State to start the year and ended up dropping that game 34-23. So three and one coming into today, and it looks like it'll move up to four and one. And now in group four, as it looks like the Millers are gonna go for it. Wayne Hills was in their punting formation, punt return formation. And they're gonna call offsides on Wayne Hills, so that'll make it a fourth and three rather than a fourth and eight. So Wayne Hills now kind of have to change their punt defense into a more conventional defense as they play the safeties deep here on fourth and three. Millers have to get to their own 36 to keep the drive going. Mocha in the gun is going to pooch punt it. It comes to the near sideline, and it goes out of bounds around midfield. A punt of about 13 yards, and Wayne Hills will have it for midfield. Another opportunity about the 45. Wayne Hills has another opportunity to score. Make it 63 nothing, I believe, for Wayne Hills and get another high season of a good game for Wayne Hills. Two and a half minutes to play, Brandon. I was gonna say same thing as two and a half minutes to play. 56 nothing, Wayne Hills. Another chance to score. John, what do you think Wayne Hills is gonna do here? I'm gonna try and get this game over with as quickly as they can. Two and a half minutes to go. They're gonna get Lemchak back into the game. Sophomore quarterback, so Hayek gets the touchdown and now he gets rewarded with some rest as the sophomore Lemchak back out there to run the offense for Wayne Hills. Handoff up the middle, that goes to number 21, Adam Abita. And Abita picks up the first down or maybe just a yard short, picks up nine yards, ruled down at the Milburn 41. So Degati coming out. Devera coming out as well. That would be Tyler, the sophomore, as Lemchek gets his guys set up with a minute 35 to go in the game. Lemchek will stay in the gun here. A couple of backs flanking him, two receivers. And give is to the near side, and a big hit going down hard there is Laterzo, it looked like, or Abita, rather. Abita, another carry. And so two... Touches for him as we tick down to about a minute to play. First down for Wayne Hills at the Milburn 39. Play, it looked like number 52 for Wayne Hills. Lundrum Nasufi got in on that play and accidentally hit the running back and got him down. And there was, uh, seemed to be a little bit of confusion on the field on that play. And, and also another new face, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, number 84, Joe Cerrone, who is a junior, getting his first time in on varsity for Wayne Hills. And the Patriots into the victory formation. They will sit on the ball with 45 seconds and ticking. They may have to snap it one more time to wrap this one up. But guys, overall, a dominating performance from Wayne Hills. What were some of the most promising signs you saw today? Uh, for me, some of the most promising signs was in the first half with the Wayne Hills offense of Brendan Devera throwing two touchdown passes and running for two and Hunter Hag receiving a touchdown. Also, Evidence Njoku getting another reception touchdown. So for Wayne Hills, it was key in this first half to get that 42 to nothing lead and take up the offense and do a great job by them. Final snap here from Wayne Hills as Lemchek will take a knee with under 10 seconds on the clock. And they may not have to take a knee. 
It looks like this game is complete. So Wayne Hills improves to four and one on the season. Have not lost to a New Jersey opponent yet this year as they take this one by a final 56 to nothing as they gear up for a matchup with Pascac Valley on the road next week. One less day to prepare, but Wayne Hills a lot of positive signs today. As Matthew mentioned, the play of the quarterback, Brendan Devera, standing out, four touchdowns in the first half, two passing, two rushing. Brandon, what stood out for you? I mean, you know, one thing that stood out for me the most, the first offensive play of the game, Brendan Devera takes himself, runs it for a touchdown. He really set up the momentum for himself, gained a lot of confidence from that play, and as you could see the rest of the game, he performed very well because of that. I think that was one of his biggest things of this so far this game. For me, I think that this 56 nothing win is a big lead, a big Sorry, to take into the next few games. They have a momentum shifter right here, and then build some more confidence and a good confidence booster in this game. So building up into the playoff against both Passaic Valley and Pascag Valley. So good opponents leading up next game. So we hope to have a good game there too. So a big win for Wayne Hills. A, their first comfortable win of the year. All of their previous victories had been by seven points. So an easier one here today. They spread the wealth around. They gave everybody chances to make plays. Evidence Najoku, a big game, a long, off, a long touchdown for him. A few catches as well. He's an X Factor moving forward who I think they were able to jumpstart a little bit today. Wayne Hills at Pascag Valley next Friday. We'll have that game for you here on Wayne Hills TV. You can catch the live stream and the recordings, as always, on our YouTube page. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today here from Patriot Stadium in Wayne, New Jersey. For my partners, Jared Pohl, Brandon Brogren, and Matthew Clarberg, I'm John Vitas saying so long from Patriots defeat Milburn 56 to nothing.